Hey friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and you are here on my homestead in Wyoming and I have something crazy to show you. It is so bright out here right now, but we had a crazy storm blow in. So in 24 hours, we got 26.7 inches, which actually broke the record that was set in 1937. So we had a ton of snow. So we have a lot of projects to get done inside today, but I just wanted to take you around the property and show you what these types of storms look like, especially in Wyoming. I think it's a little bit different because we get such crazy wind. We had about 50 mile per hour wind the entire time. Time. so we get crazy drifts so I just wanted to take you along the property and just kind of show you what this looks like in case you were ever curious so let's head out there All right, friends, so we are back inside and I wanted to give you an update on our seedlings. We have some serious up potting to get done. So here is one tray. I did start these separately off camera about two weeks ago. So we have over here is freckled lettuce, butternut lettuce, or butter crunch lettuce, uh, honey acorn, some squash, two watermelons, and then a cantaloupe and cucumbers. So we have quite a while till our next frost or our last frost. So I'm a little bit nervous, but we're gonna get these guys into some bigger pots and make sure that they have enough room. And then in here, we have some peppers. These are doing phenomenally and they are getting really big. Now I wanted to show you the difference in what good soil does for your plants. So. If you look here, let me try to get them. Actually, let me just bring you in closer. All right, so here are all of the peppers that we planted together. And then here are the peppers I planted two weeks later. I planted these peppers using Vermont compost mixed with potting soil from Haas. And this was just using the Haas potting soil. So let me show you what those bags look like. And we are gonna get these guys potted up, so hopefully they can get the nutrients they need to start looking like these guys. Okay, so here is the Vermont compost. I got the Fort V, and this is from Vermont. And I actually saw a ton of other YouTubers and just a lot of people that talk about their soil that use it. So I thought, I'm gonna give that a try and just see how I like it. And it turns out it's absolutely phenomenal. Then this is the seed starting mix I got from Haas. So this is the premium seed starting mix. That's what it's called. And it obviously does okay. My plants look fine, but they're not thriving by any means. So they took a lot less time to germinate in the Haas, but they're considerably larger in the Vermont Haas mix. So I have the Vermont Haas mix right now. We're gonna up pot these so that we can give them a better chance. All right, so in this bucket, I have my mix of the Haas seed starting and the Vermont compost. So what I'm gonna do is just, I think, mm, let's see here. These are just being reused from last year. I have a huge stack of them. So all these are just plastic cups and then I poke about three to four holes in the bottom to let the water drain. And so I'm just reusing them. I did write on them what was in there last year, but this year I'm just gonna use popsicle sticks so I can differentiate them. So let's see here. So 
So I can tell that it's time to up pot these because one, they're way too big and two, you can see the roots down in the bottom are starting to get a little bit bound. So that's telling me we need to get them move to something bigger so the roots have room, woo, room to grow. So all I'm going to do is just take the little plant and this has two. So I'm going to see if I can separate them. Sometimes you can and sometimes you cannot. You just want to be really gentle. And it looks like we can separate these two guys. You don't want to pull them or anything. You just kind of want to work them. And I think I'm going to fill this cup up and then take my finger and put a large hole in it. I'm actually going to take my gloves off so I know I'm being very gentle and I can feel everything I'm doing. I'm just gonna work these apart, keeping the roots intact as much as possible. It's funny, these smell, these plants smell like cucumbers. I can tell exactly what they are just based off of the smell of the plant. And really all I'm doing is just kind of working the soil off and kind of loosening the roots up from one another. Okay. So there we have it, our two plants. And then you can see on this that the roots are coming out. Let me focus. The roots are coming out up here. So you wanna plant these a little bit deeper so that the plant can grow. So all I'm doing is just in that hole, putting the roots and the plant in, filling in around it. and then adding a little bit of soil on top as needed. Just like that. Then I'm gonna take this pick that says what it is, cucumber, and I'm gonna put him on the front of the line. Just like that. It's funny, last year there was a cucumber in here and we replaced it with a new cucumber. All right, this is gonna be a slow and tedious process, so I'm gonna keep going on this and I will catch you when it is all done. All right, friends, so believe it or not, I was able to get one tray up potted and I filled the entire thing. So obviously I still have some small trays, but I have to have room for them to be on the grow lights. So I have this full tray full of lettuce, some lettuces back here. These are all like cantaloupes and our honey bear acorn squash. Here's some watermelons. So as you can see, and I had mentioned earlier, I used these clear little containers that I had from last year. And then I also have friends and family that share these. Or if I ever buy um, small little start plants, I will save these. And then I will just keep them for the next years and continue to up pot them. One little trick that I found works really well, and I save these year over year and continue to reuse them, is I like to put holes in the bottom of my top ones. So like, like I had mentioned, three or four holes in the bottom. And then that way I can add water to the bottom of this one and my plants can get the bottom watering that they prefer versus doing top watering. So I find that works really well. And then in my situations like this, where I have like a tray with some of them that are up potted, what I'll do is I'll just put water down below here and that will allow me to bottom water all of these as well. So when at all possible, I always try to bottom water. I find that they do a lot better that way. And honestly, it just disrupts the soil a lot less when I bottom water. So what I'll do is I'll just bottom water everything every day, assuming that it needs it. And then when I wake up in the morning, I turn my grow lights on. And then right before I go to bed, I will turn my grow lights off, give them a little bit of a rest every night. And then we do have this fan here and I'll just kind of keep trading where they go and I just kind of adjust the direction and that makes sure that all of the plants are getting um, wind on them every day and that helps make a stronger, more sturdy plant. Especially being in a really windy climate here in Wyoming, it's important that our plants all grow really strong and have a good base. So this fan enables us to do that. So. 
that is it for today. I do have a few, another shelf and more grow lights on their way so that I can up pop the rest of these. I still have over a month until I'm able to get outside before our, our or after our last freeze date. So I have a lot of plants still that are gonna need to be up potted. So I did go ahead and invest in another shelf um, and another set of these grow lights. So if you're interested, I will link those all down below. It's a bit of an investment, but it's definitely a cheaper route than a lot of the other options. So that's what I choose to go with. And if you buy a plant like this, I mean, each plant is like four to $6 now, like it's crazy. So I think that in the long run, if you are starting seeds, just get the grow lights in the shelves, just do it right. And that will save you from having to buy some bigger plants. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to come hang out with me. I definitely appreciate it. And it just means so much to me. So thank you so much for joining. If you liked today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing so you don't miss any of our delicious food coming up, our goats, chickens, animals, and also all of the gardening that is coming this season. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye friend. Mm -hmm.